Bank Street School has over the years been a source of inspiration to me, stemming back to my college and graduate school days. I also had great enthusiasm for the American Folk Art Museum, where I have been for more than two decades, and acknowledge our museum's ongoing association with Bank Street for more than a decade. Professor Nina Jensen was most helpful to me years ago when I consulted her about sensitive issues we were considering for the upcoming Henry Darger exhibition. Our former director of education was a graduate of Bank Street School. And over the years, our museum has welcomed interns from Bank Street. I had the pleasure to address the Pemberton Society of Bank Street College two years ago and shared the program with Dr. Ed Bostick, whose wonderful quilts were recently on exhibition in our atrium. And may I say, Ed Bostick has given a course and has also participated every year in those quilt programs. I also had the pleasure of sharing some of our museum masterpieces with Bank Street alumni who visited the Folk Art Museum in 2009, and I look forward to further partnerships. You come from a museum, you show pictures. <laughs> American folk art, as understood at our museum, has enormous potential as an instrument of social change. Expressive accessibility of some of the objects made by diverse self-taught creators over several centuries resonates with American core values and experience. Forms from those with shared cultural roots, as well as individuals whose articulation of highly personal, uh, or, or is highly personal, all contribute to America's multiple voices. Folk artists draw from many themes and use a wide variety of materials, race, gender, ethnicity, class, education, are not deterrents for the extraordinary craftsmen and authentic visual communicators the museum embraces. While focusing primarily on American themes and artworks, the museum's mission also has a global component as well. Exhibitions and programs draw from Folk Art Museum's extraordinary permanent collection as well as superb objects that are borrowed for exhibition from other institutions. I've selected three works to highlight folk art's compelling and dazzling power. The iconic 19th century polychrome handcrafted American flag gate is a utilitarian object, a front gate of a farm in upstate New York. That's the way it was created. But the as yet unidentified creator went way beyond necessity in his patriotic message. The inspired, bold, colorful form with its rhythmically patterned, undulating stripes contains a forceful energy that makes this work as vital today as it was 135 years ago when it was created. Here we have view of Cold Spring and Mount Taurus from Fort Putnam. This is a New York scene. A large mid-19th century painting by English-born marine and landscape painter Thomas Chambers, borrowed from the Fenimore Art Museum and recently on view at the American Folk Art Museum. The work's meaning resonates with challenging contemporary issues. The ongoing environmental debate is subtly revealed upon closer inspection. The development of any town invariably has negative as well as positive consequences. Note the lovely harmonious town view, but note also in the bottom left the implied destruction of valued natural resources. 
In this painting, you will see a well-dressed couple, but to the left, a woodsman with gun at his side, and in between, a withering, large, dying tree. Flexibility, determination, and courage were beautifully demonstrated when in 1961-1962, in her mid-70s, the Natchitoches, Louisiana, African-American painter Clementine Hunter willingly attempted to paint in unfamiliar territory what she called abstracts when her friend and sophisticated advocate James Register encouraged her to experiment. Hunter, for more than half a century, worked as a field hand and then household worker at Melrose Plantation in Natchitoches, Louisiana. She documented her life vividly painting everyday life that she experienced, work, leisure, religious activities within her community. But Hunter changed courses for two years painting these abstracts and reverted back after the two years to her more familiar and comfortable narrative style, only occasionally painting an abstract when the spirit moved her. This was among her later abstract works. She claimed for the most part that abstracts sweated her mind. Sure, she never minded picking cotton, 250 pounds a day, she said that's easy. Surely Alice in Wonderland, the title of this work currently on display at the museum, is one of her inspired works. It's full of energy, imagination, and surprising invention. Hunter lived over 100 years and was driven to paint almost to the very end of her life. Please visit us at the American Folk Art Museum, 45 West 53rd Street, and at our Lincoln Center uh, uh, branch. I thank you so very, very much. <laughs>